Bill from Washington, President JB here. Whenever Jill and I leave in our car, we tune in to our guy, Mike King Biz, on ESPN Rich. I enjoy listening to On the Mic with Mike every day. That's what I do. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. Mike King here at the Mike King Biz Studio. Hey, I got the man in the building. All right, so I got the one and only Floyd Miller of Metropolitan Business League. I'm here. I'm cutting out all the stuff and getting right to it. Shout out to our man Bam is out there. Hey, Bam. Hey, Bam. See, look. Look who I got in the studio. That's right. I got the man in here. Welcome to the program, sir. Well, thank you for having me. All righty. So tell folks who you are and what you do, and then we're going to get into it. Well, uh, first of all, um, I'm the president and CEO of the Metropolitan Business League, and uh, I've been in that position for over seven years now. I have an extensive background in nonprofit management. I spent 17 years with Special Olympics Virginia. And so I'm just excited about the direction of the organization at this point. What was, I always ask people out there, and my, my dad would always say, and I know, change the world ain't cheap, easy, or free. Money got to change hands somewhere. How do we find the next generation of people who want to go to the, uh, the side for uh, Special Olympics or the nonprofit world? How do we find them? You know, that's a good question. I, I think some of the colleges, the local universities, they've done a really good job of exposing uh, individuals that are interested in nonprofit management. Uh, you have places like the Community Foundation that offer courses on how to be managers in nonprofit organizations. And so I think, you know, uh, really Virginia has done a really good job of finding a pipeline of leaders in that in that area. What was the draw for you right off the bat? What school did you go to? I went to an undergrad Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, so you went to, where did you go to VCU to study? Uh, criminal justice, actually. Okay, so what happened, sir? That when you, <laughs> what happened? You know, I was all geared up to go work for the FBI. Okay. I actually was hired by the DEA, um, and I was out playing basketball, and I ruptured my Achilles tendon. Um, and so I wasn't able to go through uh, the training. And so at that time, I decided to go back to college. I got my master's in education. And I was working in law enforcement. I worked with the uh, Richmond Commonwealth Attorney's Office for a while. I worked with the Department of Corrections, uh, Henrico Sheriff's Department. And I really just got tired of uh, being in a position that didn't allow me to be more proactive versus reactive. And so, it, you know, working in nonprofit has allowed me to do that. So when you got to the nonprofit world, when did you know that that was your home, that you found a place? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I think I've always been a person that really liked uh, giving back. Um, one of my favorite quotes is by Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And so um, I've always been a very uh, giving person. Um, there's no feeling when you can help someone, and um, I think that's what uh, working in nonprofit is all about. Hey, shout out to Sherelle. Uh, Sherelle is out there with uh, the Sherelle's Naturals. Congratulations on everything that you're doing. I, I like you said, hey, Mr. Floyd, how you doing out there? Alrighty, so uh, when you're when I got to Richmond, they told me there's a guy, a young guy, I got to meet Floyd Miller, who's out there really doing some amazing things. So you go to MBL. How do you put your stamp on? Metropolitan Business League, and how do you set a culture that, that's winning? Well, you know, the NBL had a, a, a very long history, um, and, you know, my predecessor, Mr. Singleton, Oliver Singleton, the late and great Mr. Oliver Singleton, he did an amazing job supporting, you know, minority-owned businesses. But I think, you know, it was all about timing. I think Richmond was looking for something new and innovative. And I think that's really what I tried to do when I stepped into the role, to try to find something that was new, innovative, and just kind of step outside the box. So uh, I got Mr. Floyd Miller here, uh, the MBL. How can people get information about MBL? Oh, you can always just go to our website, peruse our website at www.thembl.org. So uh, people know you as Richmond, doing a lot of great things in Richmond. I go to Brunswick. You guys are in Brunswick. They're like, yo, MBL is down here that's giving out checks like Oprah. You get some money, and you get a check, and you get a check. Shelby was down there, and afraid of, and it was a really great place. How did you guys determine that Brunswick was the place? 
Um, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Michael White, uh, my vice president of development. Uh, I think he uh, understood the importance of us really expanding in the Brunswick area, and so I, I kind of followed his lead in that regard. Um, but we really wanted to have a presence throughout the state of Virginia. Okay. Now, the next step, going to 757. Yeah. How did you determine that was the area instead of going, say, the other way? Well, you know, since the pandemic, we've, we've really tried to have a presence in, you know, throughout the state of Virginia. Okay. The, the pandemic really sped up that process. And so we want, you know, when I came on board, I knew that I wanted to offer more online courses for individuals that were, that were more conducive to their schedule. Um, so it wasn't that we just said, okay, Norfolk is the next area. We, we already had a presence throughout the state of Virginia. And so what did you learn, okay, you just spoke on that, what did you learn from the pandemic that you guys didn't do before? Now all of a sudden you said, man, we should have been doing that all along. Um, that's a good question. I mean, you know, we provide support to small women and minority-owned businesses, but we know that a lot of businesses struggle in many different ways, and access to capital is something that a lot of businesses struggle with. And so uh, that was something that I had reached out to my board early on and said, hey, we want to try to find ways to give capital for, for businesses because we know 42% uh, of businesses fail due to the lack of cash flow and capital. And so at that particular time, you know, uh, you had the uh, PPP programs, you had the SBA idle loan programs, and so we were able to help businesses uh, with um, providing opportunities and, and funding uh, and loans. And so, you know, it just made sense for us to really try to f develop the infrastructure to have a program like that. Well, the Mike, Mike, Mike King here. I got the man. So, uh, when he walks in the door, this is what's playing. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. Mike King is ESPN. All right, so, all right, so yeah, Floyd Miller's here. Uh, MBL is out there really doing some amazing things. Uh, when Bam was here, Michael White was here a couple weeks ago, he talked about the loans. And really, the, the part for the loan says that uh, you guys are helping people out there really make a difference. And they may not get any love from other locations. Mm -hmm. When they go into a bank, they might not get, yeah, they're not, they're not going to feel the love. But they feel the love at the MBL. Talk about when people show up to your door, what it is, the help that you're able to offer them. Well, again, we wanted to create an opportunity uh, after the pandemic because there were a lot of grant programs out there. We knew that a lot of businesses were struggling with access to capital. And so we developed the capital access program. It's a, it's a portfolio of different types of funding. And so it's funding for startup businesses as well as existing businesses. And, and it's, a, it's a model program throughout the, the country because we have non-traditional funding that we provide, whether it's grants or microloans. Uh, we, we are the only Kiva hub in the state of Virginia. That's an international crowdfunding program. Because you got the Kiva lady. She's the expert. That is correct. And yeah. she's, uh, you know, and the thing is, no matter where she gives a speech at, talking about Kiva, there's a person in there going, that was the thing. I always had a question about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's been out there for a while, but a lot of folks don't know about it. Do you think that people are kind of scared off with it? No, I, I think uh, people are afraid of things that they don't know about, and it's our job to educate them on the process, and that's what uh, Sharon does a wonderful job with. She's out there uh, really letting people know what's happening as far as uh, Kiva goes. Okay, a couple of big things happening for uh, you guys, and it's sort of on the same day. Yeah, it is yeah. on the same day. That and was so, intentional. And well, there you go. So we're kicking off the morning. It is the incredible men's breakfast. So when when Bam was here a couple weeks ago, he explained a lot of things that are out there for women. You guys throw some 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 big time women's events. You do. They're they're big. Thank you. Thank they're, you. They're big. Thank you. And so he's looking around. So okay, what what's happening with the men? Now we're going to do the incredible men's breakfast. Yeah, it, it's a great uh, event. It's our second uh, season doing this. Um, it's a time for us to bring awareness during Men's Health Month. And I also found out that it's also uh, Men's Business Month. Really? That is correct. Um, and so we're, we're celebrating two 
uh, special times uh, during this event, um, all for a good cause to raise funds for our youth entrepreneurship program. And you got them. If there's ever a person who's there to raise money for entrepreneurship, it's the man BK. Yeah. In yeah. the morning. So we're there. He. He's like the Renaissance man. You know, he looks like he has his hands in a number of different things, but all of it is uplifting the community, uplifting people. And like you said, it goes back to your, your entrepreneurship program for the young folks. That is I mean, you guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to get to Alexa about uh, the Shark Tank people coming on the program. That would be great. She's yes. a dime. You know, when you look at your staff right there, mm -hmm. your staff gets it done. They, I mean... They are, and it's the way they operate, which is, you know, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, when I came on board, we had two employees. It was myself and Allison Hunter, who was actually uh, an administrative assistant, and she was part-time. And in six years, we've grown our staff to 20 people. You got 20 people? We, we have 20 people throughout the state of Virginia. And, you know, it was... I, I handpicked a lot of folks. I, I knew. I asked Micah. Three well, times we, we've had the conversation <laughs> to come about work that because I said to him, <laughs> Bam, how many times was Floyd? And he said, Yeah. He said because, but he didn't. He saw some. You saw something in him yeah. that he would find a home there. Yeah. And so after the incredible men's breakfast, which is on the well, the thirteenth, June thirteenth. Okay, and that's in the morning. Then you guys are going to kick off the the golf tournament. Yes. You yeah. play. You know, I play at it. Um, so you're not I'm, like Bam? I'm not he, he, nowhere you know. close to Bam. No, I'm, he's, I'm great on the first nine holes. And, and then, then you after struggle? That, I lose interest. He's, uh, <laughs> you're out there making deals, talking, you know, taking it uh, take it to another level. Alrighty, so what can people expect with the golf tournament? Uh, you know, we have a, a very diverse group of individuals that are going to be playing. It's a, a lot of professional men and women. Um, that uh, are committed to the cause of us raising funds for our youth entrepreneurship program. It's at a beautiful golf course. I think one of the best uh, golf courses in, in Virginia, uh, Independence. And um, under Micah's leadership, he's he's done a great job with this. So you guys are growing that. This is the second year for the the men's breakfast. Is it the second year for the golf tournament? Second well? year, yes. Okay. Yes. So we're coming back again, and those are to support the uh, the Metropolitan Business League. What's new? What's besides those two things? What's something that's on the horizon for you guys? Oh, wait. Let Let's go over to uh, the grand opening, over down over in the seven five seven. Going over there. What can people expect over in that area? Well. As I mentioned, we, we've, uh, we've had a presence in the Tidewater, they call it Hampton Roads area now. We, we've been working very closely with a lot of the municipalities as far as increasing procurement opportunities for our businesses. We worked very closely with one of our corporate members that uh, handled the Hampton Roads Tunnel expansion. Uh, that's a huge, yeah. huge con uh, contract that we've been able to get some of our members' uh, procurement opportunities. and so. This is just an expansion of what we started. We wanted to physically have a presence there, and we're expanding our capital access hub in that area at the assembly building uh, through our collaboration with 757 CoLab. How do you, there's a, a bunch of, not a bunch, but there are a number of organizations out there that dibble in this and dibble and dabble in that. How do you set the lane for MBL? what you guys are doing and then you straight up run with that one and you're out there really doing really big things it's a good question you know when i came on board i said i wanted to focus on three things to uh, really expand the organization and the first was increase our visibility i think we've done an amazing job with that um, the second was to produce bigger outcomes and the third was to focus on our mission statement and I think that's really what differentiates us from a lot of other local chambers. We really focus on three areas, one being education, uh, increased procurement opportunities, and access to capital. And I think we, when we do that, we focus on those three things. They all align with each other to help businesses sustain. All right, we'd like to thank Mr. Floyd Miller. So a shout-out to Katina Downey over at the NES uh, Cornhole Lounge. My grandkids, hey, yeah, I hope the place, you know, is still standing. We had, we had a great time. Uh, really, she was out there the other day helping uh, folks get the uh, grant for the uh, uh, Comcast Rise, which you guys, 
MBS name is all over everything. Increase our visibility. That's what it's all about. That's what we're doing. Joy Fultz, thanks. Uh, Mr. F Felton Noel out there really doing some big, big things. So, one of my Mike, Mr. Miller is here. How can people get information one last time about you, sir? You, you know, I'm, I'm very good with giving out my personal number. You can reach me on my cell at 804-339-9972. Uh, or you can reach us uh, at our office at 804-649-7473. And, of course, you can always peruse the website at www.vmbl.org. So uh, you, are, you are famous. So you, you, you are the power couple in town here. You and the missus. Uh, yes. She's, she's, she's the... Uh, yes. Y'all got it going on. So a couple of years ago, I asked her, we were on a panel, and I asked her there was a special place for a nonprofit that she truly cared about. Mm -hmm. There's a panel full of people. Everybody knew what was coming. And she didn't say the MBO? No, sir, she did not. I didn't think so. She said girls were a change. She's very passionate and, about Yes, that. she is. And I'm like, we're like, we teed it up for you. I was expecting... I was expecting the MBO. Yeah. Well, but, she, she's been a big supporter of, of mine, and, and she's a member of the organization as well. So talk about from that standpoint, when you see, like, the evolution of her brand. Like I said, you don't see what you're doing it because you're in the moment. Talk about the evolution of her brand and how it's viewed from the outside when people, because I know how people view it from where I stand. Where I look, it's it's an outstanding organization. The way she does business, it's just outstanding. Talk about when people talk to you, and how often do people try and go to you to get to your wife? I'm just trying to say so. <laughs> a lot of folks don't really know that she's my wife. I think she does a really good job of making sure that, um, you know, she doesn't want favors just because. But you wife. are at everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she does a really good job of making sure that she can, uh, you know, not really try to use my position uh, to get to make, make things happen. Yeah. What's the real quickly on the way out? Let's talk about the, uh, the, the business climate here in Richmond. Now, how do you see it uh, when people talk to you from other places? You know, I think we're ahead of the game in a lot of things. When we go through uh, the, um, we, we, I participate with the chamber intercity tour and when we go out to different states um, and look at what other cities are doing I, I think we're ahead of the curve um, I think we're doing a lot of things that uh, other areas are doing and I think we're doing it just as well um, I do love the fact that you know especially since the pandemic it's been more collaborative I think folks are starting to work together now um, because we know that um, it's hard to be in silo when it comes to supporting businesses and so I think um, it's getting better now. The ecosystem is being uh, has improved over the last couple of years. Um, this entrepreneurial ecosystem that we're in, and um, I think the, the future looks bright. Ladies and gentlemen, it's nine. I got the man in the building, Mr. Floyd Miller, MBL is here. Uh, so, uh, in June, we're going to do the Incredible Men's Breakfast. I'm going to be on stage talking to Mr. B. K. Fulton, and he's offering insight into everything. He was just here a couple of days ago. Talking about a project that he's working on, he's supporting, which is toxic with uh, Cinnamon Brown. Uh, he's a big supporter of, of the NBL as well as what I do. And what these guys are doing is amazing. So we got to run. This man has appointments and meetings, you know, big time stuff he has to do. Shout out to his team out there. Always, your team is always, uh, you know, putting you guys first and keeping NBL's name out there. On the mic is Mike. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Now take care.